and we'll be talking to Patrick as if he was William Shakespeare. So it's like a teaching technique, actor in role, teacher in role. But what was your childhood like? Were you, did you really grow up in Stratford upon Avon? Mm -hmm. How I was did. it? I, I grew up in Stratford and um, it was a normal sort of life. Um, there was no expectation that I would ever be a, a writer or anything. Right. My, my father was a, a glover, he made gloves. So we had a lot of animals around. It's almost like a farm where uh -huh. we, we made gloves out of animals. And uh, <laughs> I had a lot of siblings and I went to school at a, uh, just a one room schoolhouse where we learned Latin and a little bit of Greek and right. studied classical texts. You got knowledge, didn't you, I in did. Stratford and, and started a family before you ever joined the theater. That's right. I, I married very young to a, to a much older woman. And she was already pregnant when we got married. So okay. I had to uh, start making some money. And so eventually I left Stratford and went to London. So you went to London and um, so and where did you go? So you didn't, the, I'm obviously you're most famous for the Globe Theatre now in London, right. but that wasn't the first place you went to, was it? That, no, that came later. It came later. The first place I probably played was just called The Theatre. That was its name. Um, eventually, because they owned the theatre, but not the land that the theatre was on, uh -huh. we had to take it apart and move it across the River Thames when right. it was frozen. I see. So we did that, and that became our, our permanent home. Okay, well, here's another interesting story I didn't know. So you, you believe that you, the theatre was carried across the river while the river was frozen? Yes. You think? Yes. There was a very, very cold winter in, in uh, London, and our landlord was going to throw us off. So we just took the building with us and we moved to another neighborhood called Southern across the river. Okay. And we built the original globe there. I see. But one thing I ask, which is very interesting for us today in our situation, is that of course the theaters had to close down, didn't they? Because yes. there's a lot of people together in a very small space. It was like a thousand people in the theater mm -hmm. or something. About that, yeah. Yeah, so it's quite very intense. And of course, when there was plague, mm -hmm. and that happened more than once, I believe, yes. um, the theatres closed down. Mm -hmm. What happened? What did you do when the theatres were closed? Well, it was a situation very much like we have today, where the government would not let people gather in large crowds like the theatre. So our only choices were to make money some other way. One thing that I did was I wrote other things like my sonnets and long poems uh, that I could then publish and sell. King asked about Queen Elizabeth mm -hmm. was queen for the first part of your career. Yes. King James was king for the second part of your career. Right. But um, there's also a lot of controversy around some of the history plays people wondering if it's real history mm -hmm. or if it's like propaganda because of course the people you describe in the history plays were relations of the king and queen and people watching yes. the show. Yes. So, so in some ways, perhaps they are not so accurate. Mm -hmm. For example, Henry VII did not personally kill Richard III on the battlefield. That's okay. not true, but it's more <laughs> dramatic. Yes. And it makes the queen feel better. And, that, and Henry the Seventh was the Queen's grandfather. Correct. Is that right? yes, 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 right. So, but many, he looks cool. That's good. In my defense, many things about my history plays are absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. For many years, scholars said my portrayal of Richard the Third as a hunchback mm -hmm. was not accurate. But then they found his skeleton recently while they were digging a car park. And he was a hunchback, so I was right. You were right. <laughs> it wasn't just propaganda. Generally, you took the stories, didn't you, from other places? You didn't write the stories. That's right. I, I did not invent any of my stories because it simply would take too much time. I had to write plays quickly so that we had enough material to entertain all of our audiences mm -hmm. every day. So I took stories from old Italian poems, from history, of course, and from folklore. So, no, I did not invent any of my own stories. Right. So, I wrote in my career 41 plays, um, which 39 of them you still have today. Right. Uh, 
so that was uh, several plays every year for my entire career. Um, right. And we were also playing plays by other other playwrights right. at the time. So, so really, so you wrote a play, mm. like these amazing, huge, complex plays, and you could play that like eight times or ten times only? Yes. And then you have to throw it away and write a new play. Exactly. We, we were very lucky if people came more than once because they liked something very much. Otherwise, yes, I could spend weeks writing a play. We could play it for two weeks and then it's finished. Yes. Because, of course, there was no printing. No. There was no word. You couldn't print a copy for everybody. Mm -hmm. The only way to get the play you wrote, a new one, was because you wrote it by hand. That's right. So uh, what did that look like? So I would write one play by hand, the full play called a master copy. And then for every actor in the play, I would write or someone would write only their part. Uh -huh. So they have only their words that they speak and maybe two or three words before their line. Right. So they would know when it was their turn to speak. Right. Otherwise they had nothing. <laughs> so it was common if you were an actor like me to not even know the story that you right. were performing until you had performed it. <laughs> right. You had, because you could not read the play in advance. Did you have time to rehearse before a show? A little bit, but much of that rehearsal went into things like memorizing dances or right. fighting and things like that. So there right. was very, very little time to rehearse our lines and performances. Wow. We mostly learned our lines um, in the evening after we performed another show. So, wow. And you really then had to look. So, so whoever was playing Hamlet mm -hmm. got this text, what, like a week before maybe? Probably, yes. And <laughs> he had to learn it. He didn't know what the other people were going to say. That's right. Do you have a, a do you think a favorite play or a play that's more personal to you? Mm -hmm. I think my personal favorite play and the one that is, is more personal to me is The Tempest. It was the last play that I wrote by myself. Um, and it was, I, I was planning to retire and um, that's what the play to me is about. It's about right. me giving up uh, as the playwright for my company and sort of handing it over to an, another generation. Right, so this is coming to the end of your career. And um, what you did, which I, I learned before from you, was very interesting. So you basically finished your career in the theatre. Yes. You had the chance to produce this play, The Tempest, yes. like you say. Mm -hmm. And then you actually went back to Stratford. Mm -hmm. And you had a few more years living in Stratford. Yes. Before you, before you died. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, in 1613, I retired, as you mm -hmm. said. I wrote two more plays. Um, with a man named John Fletcher, who was another actor. And then I turned over the playwriting responsibilities for our company to him, mm -hmm. but I decided to retire. I went back to Stratford and lived with my wife uh, mm -hmm. until I died in 1616. Right. So three years of retirement. With, with your wife, who you'd married at the age of 18. 18. So you had all of those years in London, mm -hmm. and then you went back to Stratford. A final question, which we, Got from the first time I did this, um, you've had a long time to think about this. So what is the answer? To be or not to be? Mm. That is the last question. That is a good question. I think the answer is always to be. To be. Okay. Thank you very much to Patrick for, for being our William Shakespeare today. Thank you very much for watching.